Hi all, my name is Mas Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today it is Monday the 30th of March. Denmark will reopen in two weeks if all citizens do what the government say. Or else. No, put on the hat again. We have to stay safe. This is the 19th day in isolation and today we talk about mm. European mains plugs and connectors. Mm. European main supply connectors in all different kinds and sizes. This is about yeah not everything that I have of course this box of spare wires is what I are uh, spare plugs is what I have. But I do have a lot of this uh, rubber wire and with all kinds of various sizes and plugs on. But let's start with the small ones that we all know, the IEC connector. Now this is a worldwide standard for almost all equipment that you can find, especially IT equipment. But there is a few different uh, kinds of these. We can start off with uh, a standard Danish plug. As we can see, this comes with a uh, earth pen, which is quite opposite of the uh, Shuko uh, standard that we find in many other European countries. So here we have a, a special case uh, in Denmark where it is by law, um, when you do uh, commercial uh, building or uh, in industrial stuff, you must have connectors uh, with this earth pen on it to ensure that you have your equipment earth all the way out to the end user. Now, almost everything you buy today comes with a sugar plug. So you're actually required to snap that off and mount a proper Danish plug for ensuring that the earth connection cannot be removed. So it's not even okay to just use one of these converters where you put another plug on it and you have the earth pin as a male instead. Now there's also a different, a uh, few different uh, IEC plugs in this business end. These two comes from um, IT equipment. One here that uh, has a clip against being uh, pulled out and the other has a small notch um, so you cannot mis misplace it uh, between uh, different apparatuses. These are rated for 10 amps at 230 volt AC, so that's a good 2300 watt you can pull through this. There is of course also a 16 amp version of this plug. This is uh, mostly used for uh, large server installations. And you can pull 4 kilowatt uh, through this 16 amps at 230 volt AC. Staying in the 230 volt AC uh, business end, there's also the uh, what you can call this the outside garden spec IP44 um, plugs and connectors. And the good thing is that this also interconnects, or you can make converters between the normal plug here and then the CEE or standard plug for 230 volt. AC. So these are usually used when you have to use 16 amps, whereas this is a rather special 16 amp plug. So 230 volt AC, 16 amp, you see these blue plugs, which are not to be confused with the red plugs, which is meant for three phased. But it's still not that simple. You can still get these in all kinds of configurations with two to seven pins, I think it is. So you can do a lot of custom stuff with these plugs, but it's a very nice system as it's uh, distributed all over Europe. So you can almost use your cables and prepared uh, stuff all over the European Union. Now, before we talk about the modern three-phased stuff, we can just take a peek back on the old Danish standard for uh, three-phased 400 volt AC. Came in uh, this form here. This is a standard in uh, households that uh, almost any Danish household uh, will have three-phased power at 
25 amps uh, put in. And we use these mostly for our stoves, ovens, washing machines, uh, tumble dryers, all kinds of uh, high, um, high current uh, appliances. We uh, mostly supply from three phases, so uh, we never put much more out than uh, a 16 amp uh, service from our main breaker panel. This is the small type that you usually will see behind kitchen appliances. The industrial version, a little more bulky and heavy, and just comes with a throw switch connector, so you can actually um, yeah, turn this on and off with full load. As far as I remember, these are not rated for uh, full load switching, as these are meant for households. Here I have just a extending cord for three-phased 16 amps. For that, um, we have to use four times one and a half um, square millimeter uh, rubber cable. You could also go up to two and a half. Um, square millimeter, depending on the distance. That's mostly to do with voltage drop, as the power dissipation in a cable like this can be pretty high, as it should be laid out flat on the ground, so it can dissipate, uh, dissipate uh, the losses inside of the cable. Underneath is a 32 amp service cable. Now this is a special one made for uh, my large Tesla coil, that's why you see male male in both ends. So this is what you can call a dangerous cable, never to be uh, used for anything else. That's also why it's normally just packed away in a box for my uh, Tesla coil stuff. The cable used on uh, this 32 amp service uh, extender is 5 times 6 square millimeter, so once you get up in uh, the bigger currents, the cable also really gets thick, bulky and heavy. Now once we move up into the 63 amp service, the cable is 16 square millimeters. And now we're talking some serious cable that starts to weigh, weigh so much that you're not just dragging 15 meters of, 50 meters of that around at your own will. That's some heavy stuff. But uh, let's take a look at the uh, different um, plugs here. You can also get the 230 volt in a 32 amp version. You can get them in uh, wall mount or enclosure mount versions. So here we have a 32 amp female. Now that's not uh, made for this connector here. That's more for this one, where it has a watertight gasket around it. So this is made for outdoor installations where you would want some serious waterproofing. If uh, I could get it down there. Ah. Yeah, that's pretty tight, but it also has to be to keep water out. Almost nothing will keep water out when you leave that outside. You will always get some creeping current to earth once the moist gets into the plugs. Another 63 female plug. Another one. And the next step up from the 63 uh, amp plug is a 125. And I actually do not think I have any 125, as those are seriously large plugs. Another extender plug of the old Danish version. So nice hard plastic. Older CEE types. You can see they come in all kinds of uh, versions from different manufacturers, but it's still same standard, can be used anywhere. And that seems to be about that. Except we have a wall plug version for the 32 Ampere. 
or a 16 amp feed through for a enclosure. You can also get all kinds of uh, extenders and branching uh, units for the system. So you don't have to make all these kind of small extenders like this, because they are only uh, spec'd for having one cable going out of them. So once you m see these uh, illegal versions where you have three cables coming out of something like this, which goes into uh, three 230 volt AC from the three times 400 volt, well, instead you can just use these extenders much better and they only cost some 30 uh, euro, so not exactly expensive for the convenience you get. Having 230 volt AC spread out over the three phases or just extending out to uh, three new 16 amp services. And the yellow one I have down here, that's a little special uh, service plug from um, Elevators. And uh, I heard from someone that installed Elevators that this is uh, something they plug in during the uh, installation and calibration of the elevator. And uh, you have to use it when you ride on top of the uh, elevator chair. So you always have an emergency stop at your fingertips when you sit on the, the dangerous side of the, the chair. And you have 230 volt AC for your laptop or lightning. 230 volt AC for your laptop or lighting. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what they use that for, but I would guess it's for a laptop. So that was a small demonstration of the European main supply plug sort among what you can get and use all over Europe. I do not have many special plugs from other parts of the world uh, and I did not pull out some of those boxes but then we would start seeing something like this. Weird custom plugs dated from a time where yeah, God knows who invented these. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, so until next time, see ya.